Hi all, uh, you're very welcome to this evening's webinar. Um, it's James Scott here again, uh, the Women's Under-17 Head Coach. Um, so as I said, I'm going to quickly start off, um, same as last week, just a little bit on the format and uh, how we run things and so on. Um, so just turn off your camera and mic when, when you come in. Uh, please submit any questions through the meeting chats or the Q&A at the end of the presentation if you have any questions or look if it's something you want to ask me after just whatsapp me or, or send me an email or whatever there's no problem with that um click on more actions full screen if you want to see the, the presentation full screen um all sessions are being recorded so it'll be back up so if there's there's been one or two coaches says they can't make tonight like so they can look back on it um on that as well um on the team's page presentations will be available on the page as well one thing <clears throat> tonight there's a good few videos in it the videos when they play are a little bit blocky um so just just you know you you can uh, you can download the presentations yourself and the videos will be perfect so that's something that you can look back on whatever you want um clips will be included in some presentations but i said the quality would poor sometimes uh that's the start time as, as is questions that's next week we'll talk about that just today as well like look this is my my um um you know ideas and so on and and, and the women's under 17 staff and look it's, it's the overall association's kind of way of doing things and so on like but at times there might be things you say yeah that's a very good idea i'm not sure about that and all that but but uh look hopefully you pick up a few things um out tonight please respect all obviously all pre pre presenters and participants and enjoy okay so that's just same stuff as we talked about last week um so this is the match i'm going to look at in in like like we we'll say mainly um as in we'll be dipping in and out and different experiences um throughout the year but this was a game, it was a double header friendly. It was the first game of the double header friendly against Iceland um, in the RC in Warford on, on the 14th of February this year. Um, so it was a seven o'clock kickoff as well. So just to give you an idea how the day ran um, and so on. That's just the staff. So just to give you an idea of staff. So myself, head coach, assistant, Irene Herr, um, assistant coach as well, Pearl Slattery, goalkeeping coach, Dave Rooney, the analyst is Alana Moran, Chelsea Newland equipment manager, Dr. Louise O'Connell, physio Charlotte Skidmore, and team operations, Claire Conlon. Um, a few other things here as well, like obviously, you know, a lot of the, the, maybe the female coaches here will know some of the girls from the UEFA B, so a number of the girls on the UEFA B um, course there recently as well, the first one. Um, so so that's, that's super as well, and to have them on board. Okay, this is the match day itinerary then. So that's what we had for that Friday the 14th for match day one. Okay. Um, so looking at half nine staff meeting. So we would always meet in that staff meeting. It'd be basically team operations. So that's really logistics going through everything with Claire to make sure everything is okay. Um, in terms of logistics and, and how the day is going to pan out. I would also find out of the medical staff then as well, if there was anyone that had an ignorant injury, you know, obviously February, it could be things like flu and different things going on as well. Like so, so maybe the things that could happen as well. And then obviously the technical side of it as well. Um, now what we would normally always do the previous nights, so the Thursday and um, the 13th, we would have gone through the opposition. Um, so the players would have all that. They'd have the strengths and weaknesses um, everything about the opposition. So that that would be done and dusted. Um, and really now it's just really just basically selecting the team and and um, and basically going to uh, to the, the meetings, as you'll see, unit meetings and, and pre-match meeting. So that's that's how the day um, basically plans out. So your breakfast, 10 o'clock, looking at the girls having a lie-in because it's a long day. Um, so, you know, you know, traditionally it could be eight o'clock, whatever, you know, half eight breakfast, but 10 o'clock because it's a long day. A team walk mobility, um, I'll go through that as well. Unit meetings, go through how we, we work them. Lunch at one o'clock, rest, physio, medical, um, and then pre-match meeting and then pre-match meal. And then the part of the match venue. So with all UEFA, um, like any matches, uh, international matches, 90 minutes before you have to be at the match venue. Um, so then we arrive then at, at half five and then seven o'clock kickoff, return to the hotel, dinner, player staff meeting. So a few just other little things just to talk about. Everything works back from kickoff. So whatever kickoff time you have, 12 o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, just always the day pans out and you work back from that. Um, meet and greet always in the morning. Pairs will come down, um, shake hands, greet your staff, all that stuff. Uh, very, very important as well. Um, having players confident doing that and so on, is, I think is really important. Relaxed environment, so everything is spaced out. So we don't ever have a thing during the day where we're rushing anywhere. And that, it has to be a relaxed environment. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of nerves from not just players, but staff as well. Like So really have a relaxed environment all day. Um, well done and good night. Then at the end of the night, same thing again. Shake hands with staff, players. Well done, good night. Um, 
and important you do what suits you and your players best. That's really, really important. And as well, obviously, in your scenario as well, um, you know, you could be playing away, it could be a three-hour drive, whatever it might be, you have to to uh, to do what suits you and your players best. Okay. Um routine is, is important though. So like no matter what the the kickoff time and so on, like a lot of the routine would be similar, like we'll have you know, unit meetings, we'll have the team walk, all that stuff will be the exact same. Um, obviously, if you've got a 11 o'clock or a 12 o'clock kickoff, it's a little bit more um, condensed. So um, this is just giving you an idea of kind of the food and all that kind of stuff that we go through. So we have an FEI meal plan that would be sent out to all the medical staff, sent out to myself, and um, this would come from Dan Horn. And when Dan Horn is presenting in a few weeks, Dan is going to um, actually include this for all the the, um, the coaches on this as well. So he's going to send out the meal plan. So you get an idea of you know what for breakfast, uh, lunch, pre-match, um, all the meals, um, half time, everything. Um, so Dan is going to make that available um, for his um, after his presentation. So that's that's a nice one for you. Um, so medical staff will oversee all meals. So that's something um, you know. So with chefs, all that they they look after all that. They talk to the chefs, make sure everything's a one. They're down there. Um, usually nearly 30 minutes um, before the meal is actually served um, so that make sure everything is okay, everything is ready and ready to go and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's important as well for ourselves to have an, a basic knowledge also, right? So we, we, we have a good idea of what they should be eating, when they should be eating, how much they should be eating. I think that's important as well. Like So even though it might be an area that you're an expert in, you, you can definitely learn a few things. Um, that's a big one. Watch portions for meals. So education is very, very important. So at the start of the year, we would have had um, presentations from the medical staff and that on, you know, um, basically your food, your hydration, um, sleep, everything. Okay, so like we're educating the players always. So like one of the big things you'll see is, you know, they come down, they have a breakfast, but then you have like lunch and then you have a pre-match like only maybe two, three hours later. Like, so, you know, someone could come down, have a big breakfast, have a big lunch and then eat nothing before the pre-match and then be hungry maybe before kickoff and they might not have the energy. So they're all things that you'll see. And then some players are different as well. They might want to eat and all that. So it's all stuff that you need to uh, to factor in. Um, so like that's that's what I'm saying about nerves, pre-game rituals and all that kind of stuff with different players. Water always available, players name on their bottle. Um, so that's always available throughout the, the, the camps. Um, just a couple of little things on this. So obviously goalkeepers don't exert as much energy as outfield players. So goalkeepers don't need to be eaten as much, um, plain and simple. Like, you know, so you don't need to have, a, a play, particularly in the pre-match, have a big pre-match and so on because they're not going to be as using as much energy. Players not starting, that's kind of an interesting one as well. Like, because, you know, you think, well, they're not starting, should eat as much and all that, but it's always very, very important that you prepare as best as possible. So who knows, after a minute, you might have to come on. Um, so you have to prepare as if you're playing. Um, rest really, really important during the day. Um, and you know, 16, 17 year old girls, like, you know, they want to be chatting in rooms, all that kind of stuff, but trying to get that into their heads as well, that they need to put their foot, feet up, they need to rest, some might have a sleep, whatever it might be, that's really, really important as well. Um, pretty much, pretty much meal, really important as well. Um, so, you know, that people have um, enough it that they can perform, plain and simple. Um, but a big one as well is, is um, is is throughout the the days leading up to the games and all that the players are eating properly and, and eating well and all that so you might have nerves and all that you know that might come in on match day but it's important that during it um the camp and, and even outside the camp that players are eating properly and so on um again staff eat what the players eat plain and simple so so uh that's that's a big one as well because like you can't be there eating whatever you want the breakfast and all that and the players looking at you going you know you, you have to, to set the example as well so that's really important light switch is always on so that's something that You'll hear me saying if you, if you've been in camps or or had players in camps, they will probably say I've said that a good bit. Like what I mean by that is is that players come in, they come into the Iceland camp for ten days. They absolutely are top class. Their attitude, how they behave, and um, what they eat, what they drink, all that stuff. The rest, everything is top class. But they have to do that when they go away again. They have to do that continuously if they want to really reach reach their potential. So that's why the light switch is always on, always on, um, no matter where you are. Um, that has to always be in your head. Um, so that's just a little example there of if you know if you take that as your plate, that's what you should have on a, on a rest day or a light training day. So like a rest day could be sometimes if we're away playing three games in a in a, in a lead phase or a first phase on the after the second game we'd always have a rest day, absolutely no training or anything. Um, or light training would be after obviously this game we play on the Friday, so Saturday would be light training. So that's 
like obviously you can see that there that's your plate fruit and vegetables those that carbohydrates and protein um so that's how your your, your plate should look in, in terms of quantities and so on and dan will go through that a little bit more um when he's on as well love these infographs um these are things you can you can send out to your players you can put put together a little um you know a little presentation or a little booklet or whatever it is but everything here is absolutely top class and I, like this is going to be on powerpoint so you can go back and grab these um and, and and put them into your own presentations whatever you want but really really good stuff here um so day before minus six hours breakfast three hours and so on um and again half time what you should have and all that really really good and then the one on the right then is is after the game so you have your match day what do you do you refuel recovery shake um carbohydrate protein meal 90 minutes sleep rehydration all that stuff really really important and then obviously match day plus one then what you should do in terms of recovery um so i like these these are really really good nice and handy um you know we put these into into presentations and um into the padlet and things like that that you'll see um as you go okay so team walk mobility that's a nice little picture i think irene took this picture i think she, she could be a photographer as well but uh that's just on tremor in tremor um i think it was after um maybe in between game one and game two but just having a walk the the girls went in and actually um for a little dip as well like you know so good for recovery as well um but really really important to have a team walk get out of the hotel and, and so on um again if you're going you're playing a game three hours away important to stop have a little walk 15 20 minutes um on your journey so just a little 10 minutes and clear your head get out of the hotel two staff members usually medical staff will go um, again, important for, for especially technical staff at times like that, you do take a rest when you need to or else you'll burn out. Um, you know, if you're away for 10, 11 days, uh, day five or day six can get, um, you can have a little bit of a wobbler. So, so that's important as well. Mobility, gym, kit room then. So that's just little stretches, a little bit of mobility. And um, that can obviously be done in the gym if it's, if it's in the hotel or the kit room, wherever it is, wherever you have a little bit of space. OK, so I think they're important. Um, and, and it's particularly if you're going away for maybe a tree or drive or whatever that, that you have um something like that during your trip okay um a couple of questions come in during the week about like you know your your, your starting 11 and so on right um plain and simple with this and this was done very very early with him like we, we don't want any long faces be it like you know you think about it, you, you start and then you get taken off at half time whatever is it going to be long face you don't want to start there's going to be long face you get taken off for five minutes left there's going to be long face you're not captain there's going to be long face that doesn't happen with us right from the very very get-go yes you're you're, you're in the squad unbelievable achievement to get into an international squad and all that but how you conduct yourself is very very important there's one or two at the start and i have to say particularly one girl um uh absolutely changed her whole mindset in, in terms of all that stuff and that was really really satisfying like but um like so so what i would say to you is we would have been in tr uh, match day minus three so whatever that was tuesday i think um so and we the game on friday so we came in on tuesday and when we would do the training sessions everything we would do um, would be around that start 11 so like people know who's going to start that game like um obviously when we play friendlies then like another team will you know there'd be a number of changes for the second game when you're away and you're playing and you're qualifying for the elite stages or, or first phase well then you know you're picking the team that you think will, will get you three points and so on because that's what we have to do at this stage as well we're, we're yes we're development players but home players to uh to excel in an environment like this as well like and get you know the, used to maybe being a substitute coming on being a game changer I don't even like the word substitutes game changers is what i nearly say like so so that's that's the mindset as well like so um so with that like players would know probably on tuesday like what starting lineup is like um again always something and, and with all the staff we'd be always looking out to see if someone's kind of has a um you know a long phase or whatever because they're not starting or whatever so that's that that's there and, and players know it from the very very get-go um you know meeting then so with these nice and simple that's just giving a little kind of an idea um this one actually i think is is a, is a is, is actually probably a, after a match and we're reviewing the overall game so everyone's in the room but up there are the midfielders so in normal set setting um the technical staff would be sitting down and uh, the five or six midfielders would be up and they'll be going through the game plan and um, that's what we do for a unit meeting so goalkeepers defenders will be together midfielders will be together and when you're center forwards will be together so three groups sometimes the midfielders obviously connect and might come in with the defenders and with the wingers and center forwards at times if we think need, needs be um but this would be basically be a unit meeting okay um and when i would have done these and, and this is what i'm saying about like you know evolving and all that like uh, the last team was evolved that we would come in um we would have the tactics board we would go through this is what you know we're going to do we'd ask them obviously questions and all that but very much be like you know 
um, myself and maybe the, the coaches going through, this is what we're going to go through and blah, 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 and, and you know, moving things around tax board and asking questions and all that. But completely flipped it this year. Um, when they come in for the unit meeting, they're up straight away and we go, right, how are we going to defend? How are we going to attack? What's our transitions? Um, and they, they basically go through everything. Um, and then we give them scenarios. What if this happens? What's, what if that happens? Um, and very quickly, we want them to get into scenarios where, yes, like, you know, if you see that girl up taxi board, she's probably uncomfortable in there. But I think now towards the end of the year, they're not anymore, like, because they're just used to it. They know what's expected as well. Um, and everyone um, contributes as well. So short and start, 10 minutes is all we look to do. It's player led, as I said. Coach and staff give scenarios. So we might say, what if they do this or what if they do that and, and see what they give us back. And, um, you know, obviously as well, if, if, um, if, if, they're not sure about something, then then that's where we will we'll step in and maybe give them a little bit of guidance. Four functions again, so attacking, transition to defend, defend and transition to attack. Um, you know, it might be a little bit on set piece or something like that, maybe, or it might be an individual chat with someone on that. Players use tactics board to explain, um, and then everyone contributes. So again, same thing, we, there's not a scenario where you have a girl that kind of, you know, goes back and it's maybe the, you know, could be the captain or one of the girls that likes talking or whatever. No, everyone contributes. So. Um, if you see there, um, that's Kayla Dowd up in tactics board, but Ellen will be up there next. Avian Clancy, Olivia Gibson, Mern, they'll all have a turn maybe on tactics board and, and chatting as well. Um, so we'll break that up. And the other thing as well, we do as well, just to, like you might say, right, who wants to talk first? Like, and someone puts their hand up and one that doesn't put their hand up, whatever, right, you're talking first. Like, so, you know, they never know um, who's, who's going to be on and all that. So just, just to prepare them. Um, so videos sometimes used if needed then as well. Uh, Pre-match talk then, so, that's an example of a pre-match talk. Um, if you just have a little look at that picture, so you just see the tactics boards up there, the presentation is there, and there's flip chart there as well. There might be a few focus points in that or whatever to maybe help you as well, because that's something I've always found as well. Sometimes, like, you know, you might be well prepared and all that, but then you go in and there might be something you forget. So it's, it's good to have a couple of things to note back. And, and it's very good to to have, like, Pearl, Irene, um, uh, Dave or Lana to, to to step in as well if I forget something or whatever. So that's uh, that's something that you look to do as well. So if you also look at this picture over on the right, um, so over here in, in, in the right inside the room, you'll see that's the defenders and goalkeepers. There's the midfielders and there's the, the wingers and the forwards. So it's it's unit again. What I used to find before was you could be inside the dressing room and inside the meeting and, you know, you know, a girl would go and sit beside her friend or whatever, wherever they're coming to her, you know, that, that's a scenario, but you could have a goalkeeper beside the centre forward or whatever, and you're asking for that person, you're looking around the room and all that. So very quickly, if we're talking to defenders, you're looking at them. Um, if you want to talk to one, someone specific, you know exactly where they are in the room. Um, that's the reason we do that. So, and as well, the simple little things as well, can everyone see all that stuff is really, really important. So, um, like the, the, the guys think I'm a little bit mad at times, but be straight into the, the, the room just to see what it's like, what size is, all that stuff is really, really important. Um, so short and start, 15 minutes, that's all it is. Units together, starting team, so we go through who that is. The focus points, but as I said already with starting team, that's nearly, you know, it's a given already unless maybe someone's picked up an injury. Focus points, again, four functions. Um, obviously set pieces added into that as well. So what we've highlighted and, and mainly kind of maybe areas we've seen weaknesses in the opposition. So what are we going to focus on? Um, and obviously looking at what they're good at as well and how we're going to combat that. Set pieces. So Dave um, is a set piece um, person that looks after all that stuff. So Dave goes through the set pieces and then we have a little motivational video and uh, everything then is up in the Padlet and Huddle. So um, nice and simple. Padlet is, is just a little thing. I'll show it in a sec and Huddle as well. Same thing. It's just just a, a little uh, basically Huddle as you all know, but all the videos would be up there. We'd have breaking it down and all that. So they can look at that at any time on their phone or or iPad or if they have a laptop or whatever, like, you know, that, that's there um, for them as well to um, to look back over. So even up to the game, um, you know, on the Padlet, we could be going to the game, could be, you know, four or five minutes away. They could be looking through their, their Padlet um, or their iPad or their phone, whatever, and looking at the opposition, the, the presentation we had the night before, uh, what's their strengths, what's their weaknesses, all that stuff. And then obviously Huddle as well as, as has the video as well. Okay, so this is just giving you, um, look, don't think there's any secrets in anything. This is what we would use for, for corners and so on. Absolutely, um, you know, you can have loads of different things and how you do it and all that. I, I find it's just just nice and simple. Ball crosses, people moving, all that. It's just nice and simple. Um, again, in dressing room as well. It's 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 um it's easily people can see it and all that kind of stuff. So it's uh it's what we use. Um, I'm very much about. I I, I can't like say it, like a set piece is just so so important. We put massive emphasis on them this year. And when I'm talking. 
attacking corners, obviously defending corners, the free kicks, but like massive on throw-ins as well. Um, you can see at the moment, like Liverpool have a throwing coach and, and he's getting a lot of a lot of press at the moment, like, but how important they are, um, how many throw-ins you're just seeing thrown down the line or just giving away or thrown up, uh, like, you know, up around your, your head or whatever, or, or your body and, and, and you lose possession. So really, really important, um, all that. But down to as well, even kickoffs. So we will always go forward with kickoffs as much as possible. Um, and we look to find that little bit of space maybe between the fullback and a, and a, and a, and a centre back. And maybe can we attack that? If we don't win it, you know, we, we, we counter press straight away and see what we get. OK, so that's just giving you a little idea of the movements and, and, and what happens. Again, very much about we've really, particularly this year, absolute unbelievable set piece takers. Um, so that's been really, really good. So, um, you know, it, they put it on the plate sometimes. So that, but again, big emphasis on that. This is just giving you a few corners this year. The first one here, like actually goes all the way to the net. So even Clancy taking it and, and it's the direct um, goal. So let's just have a look at these. So not bad if you can do that. And um, this is a few minutes later. It looks like nearly the same, but uh, the daughter already got this one. Always like, you know, you might have a little bit of structure. This is how we're going. This is always available. The girls know this as well. Just go and see what you play. If something's on, go and play it. Great little cross. And uh, very happy back so that, that, that game, three headers, three corners, three goals. See Aaron McLaughlin here coming at the yeah. And really, the big thing we've seen on that little run there is how often the, the person maybe that might be on the post or whatever it is, they don't actually open their body. Um, so so that's that's a big one. Um, OK. So defending corners then. Um, so this is just a little de defending corner, what we, how we set up and so on. Um, so person on the back post, um, even Clancy there is in the hole. Um, with players then picking six six pickers, and McLaughlin's outside, and Eva Horgan then is is up front, ready for anything um, that that comes out around that area, or if the keeper gets into their hands. Um, again, a few little things there that we look for. So size or size player you pick up. Um, it'd be a little thing as well. I go through in a minute, like looking at at their opposition and maybe who picks them up. Um, do their job, attack the ball, clear the danger, read a second ball, react and press the ball, break quickly or delay if required. So again. You know, it could be the last minute of the game we're winning one nil, like so the keeper goes down there, but it could be the opposite, and then she's hitting Nefa straight away, and Aaron is, is, is breaking. Um, what you'll see with this one as well, I didn't include the other one, but short corners. So, so, um, Avian Clancy would 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 go out, and Aaron would go out, and Aoife would come back here, right? And you're going to see a perfect example of this where it was kind of a bit of a signal to, to concede this goal, but again, it, not not blaming players, it's it's getting us, are we getting through what we expect, and so on, and no hesitation, and all that. So and you see if if it, if it goes over it even just goes back in the post okay so again um so this is just a, a corner just have a look at a setup here so um Avian's there on, on, in the hole um players picking up you can see here a couple of things that 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 was probably you know Aaron McLaughlin needs to be back a little bit earlier she's not in the picture at all Kerry here has two players outside in this area here um you know and and what you'll see now is they, they all of a sudden let maybe it was right back or someone that was defending they went for a short one um and avian fairness went out but everything went from there when the player here goes out the player here comes into that position um but you'll see there's just a little bit of hesitation and then the, the simple thing of putting your head to it um so <laughs> Okay, so it was a poor goal to give away, but again, look, um, all learning experiences. Um, so, so just, just, just giving you an idea. Just example of throw in here. So obviously, full back is taking the throw in. That's how the midfield would set up. So, and um, the number six player would be in the hold position. So looking maybe to receive it to switch play. Um, the, the the other advanced midfielder would be link player, so whoever's closest that side along with the winger on that side, and then uh, EM, Ellen Malloy, stretch player. So don't want three midfielders coming into the exact same area. And if, if Avian Clancy or Murren gets on it there and can find 
um, Ellen in that place. Look, she's a really, really good shot. Then, then we could get something out of that. Also, have a look at the the left winger. Um, don't want that player coming in around here. Stretch it, stretch it, and then all of a sudden gives her something to think about. And you know, it could be blind side wherever the space is. Just, just a few little ideas of what we look to do. This player as well, like you know, so it might be their winger, whatever. Based on her position, that's where where the left back might be. But if you'll see um, in one of the goals in, in, from Trowins, the the actual winger went all the way back here, so they nearly had a back five. So that left loads of space for the full back here. So then obviously the full back goes into that place, and you'll see uh, a goal on that in a minute. So here's just a few little ideas from Trowins. So having a look at this one, again, right back is taking it. That's the white, the white right, and that's the midfield, um, the the advanced midfielder in that area. Just look, just a simple little rotation, and that's all we're looking at. And can we get something out of it? See good position now from the winger. She stepped off the here, the best space, makes it a turn. Here's in. Here's in. Can again, little, little pop off. One, love it. A little movement there from the wing inside to the full back space outside. Here, just pop out. Position. Here's the example I said. So you see, here back five nearly. Again, as I said, like look, really, really important set pieces. Um, really can't say that enough. Like so, and the thing about it is, like, um, you know, I, I would have been involved over the years since I've been at development also with different squads and all that. And what I always used to see was set pieces were done, like maybe, you know, it could be candy cups, gainer cups. It could be done in maybe the last couple of sessions before the actual tournament. Like, but they have to be worked on always. I think there's a uh, 40 throw-ins per game. Like 40 throw-ins per game in uh, around average, like you know, and, and our full backs that should be one of their superpowers. Um, so, like you know, just just emphasis on that is, is massive. Again, just before we finish then and break away, we have a little bit of a motivational video. Um, so we have Irene here, here who's fairly good at the motivational videos. So um, she just just a little simple little thing here that kind of you know sums up what we're about. When brought together, two letters of the alphabet have great meaning. They are W and E. We. We live together. We study together. We eat together, we travel, we practice, and we hurt together. We trust each other. We have each other's back on and off the pitch, and we value each other's opinions. When we win, we win as a team. When we have a bad day, we pick each other up. We battle hard, we don't quit, and we will never stop. We are relentless. When we get on the pitch, we are invincible. At the end of the day, we are one, and that is why we are family. Okay, so just nice little videos, things like that, are really, really good before a game or whatever, and, and uh, take as much as you can from maybe the camp pictures and things like that. Um, so this is just giving you an example of the, the paddle at wall. Um, so it's just a little app that you can get, and, and everything goes in that. So you see some, some of the things we have about mindset, the values, um, the mindset workshop. So during the year, we've done workshops on mindset, on momentum in games, on game management, massive. You see that one there in game management, um, obviously set pieces, all that stuff. So like, you know, we put everything up there, like, and it's it's available and it's available all year. Like, you know, the way sometimes you might um, do flip chart things and so on. Um, and, and next thing then you put, put them in the bin and they're gone, like whatever, but everything is up there. And we can look back through the whole year. Um, and it's even good as well to look back and see their ideas of what they would have filled in early on the year and then ha seeing how, how it's improving their football language and so on. Um, so that, that's good. And you'll see as well here, that's game plan versus Lithuania. So that presentation there would be everything um, in, in terms of opposition analysis, uh, analysis. So all the videos, 
um, their top players. We would also use academy soccer coach. You'll see it a few times maybe in this present presentation as well for for um, for just little little pictures of of things that they'll do and so on. Um, so all that is there, and it's just easy for them to stop open that. And they can look at it any time. Okay, um, you'll see little things there of focus points. Again, some of them are in grey. Putting into pictures the right way around, but focus points again. The four functions: game versus Greece, and so on. Um, the other little thing I'll just see see here here as well is is game plan versus Lithuania. We play the game. Then the next day we'll reflect on the Lithuania game. Okay, so that's what you'll see in the middle there, and then game plan versus Greece. So now our focus points against Greece. What are we going to do in the four functions? And then you'll see, we're going to see a little bit, but game plan versus Greece is there. So that's kind of how we will we will go through um, camps and so on. Um, dressing room, really, really important with dressing room, make it a special place. So have that wow factor when players come in and so on. Um, so that's just a little example um, of the dressing room. Again, simple enough, you'll see, you'll see in every one of the the team dress rooms um but again it doesn't matter your club as well like you know i think i think that's really really important so it's always something i would have done even um you know back when i was involved in club teams like if, if you have a dress room whatever and the jerseys have them nice and neat and when players come in it's it, everything is ready to go um again simple little thing as well if you see the little um kind of a4 page there so that's just like a headshot of them their number their name and you can't really see it but in small kind of writing is a motivational quote that it's theirs like so what's your what's your motivation quote what's what thing you always kind of you know you know it just sticks with you or whatever so we put them up um for them as well okay there's just giving an example of the set plate uh, set pieces so set pieces will be done in the meeting they'd be in the dressing room and they would have them as well and, and we can put them on an ipad as well like so like you know they're always available for players um if needs be and you can see some of the um half time nourishments and so on um you have to watch as well staff taking jellies that's probably a big one um and their tactics board they're ready to go as well so like uh, you'll see probably at the end in another picture actually i think what 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 is is, is something that kind of does my head in maybe in in, in most places you go is tactics board it's probably essential to have a flip chart board um because it's very hard to put the tax board like you're not going to do it there as a table in the way is everyone going to be able to see it so as much as possible, um, I would have a flip chart. So it's maybe something just think about in your home dressing or whatever. Away, obviously, it's, it's a little bit different, but I would always have a flip chart um, board for ready to go. And that's just a little flag we have, just a little saying that we have, um, and that's just on the way out uh, of the dressing room. Warm ups then. So let's give you a little ideas on this um, of what we do. So you have to be 90 minutes before kickoff. That's um, just for UEFA and, and um, for all our competitions. But I recommend no less than 60 minutes. Not a nice more than seeing a team come in 20 minutes before kickoff, go out, have hours for warm up, and then game starts. Like and like you see that at all levels. Like you know, it's not a case oh that would be at like you know another 12 girls game or boys game, whatever it might be. It's it's all levels you see it. So I would always recommend 60 minutes. Everyone's in, have a little walk around. There's no rushing. You know, a little bit of time to think about the game and so on. Um, walk on the pitch, boots really, really important. Say to, say to the, the girls always, you have to have two pairs of boots. Um, and and one of the clips even does a girl slips like, and, and the first thing I asked her after the game is like, can I have a look at your boots like, and I probably had the wrong boots on. Um, so you know, really, really important on that. Warm up, thirty minutes max. Now, when I'm saying thirty minutes, it's not full go thirty minutes. Um, that's like you know going out. Um, you'll see there's just three different parts to it, all that stuff like so. Um, it's not going for 30 minutes, but I would never be any more than that. The other thing as well we have, and sometimes you'll have it in certain um, in, in certain places as well, or if you're in finals and all that, we have to be in like 20 minutes before kickoff. So that's something that 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 we have to bear in mind as well. So um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So weather conditions is a big one as well. So what are weather conditions like? Set piece takers, goalkeepers, all things that they need to consider. Um, set piece takers. So we always have them out and just, just having a look how far away is the... How, you know how big is the pitch all them things like that that might come in where's the wind all that kind of stuff um so, so there'd be things they think about goalkeepers again thinking about that so they would have them a little chat about all that stuff everything we do is position specific in, in terms of the football side of the warm-up um so that's where they'll split and they'll they'll be position specific so i just just my, my thoughts on this is you know over the years i, I would have done all kind of warm-ups and you know it's always kind of one of them coaches that would go to a game to see the warm-ups and all that like you know um but uh, I just 
think lately to be more effective, like get them to play where they are going to do and do things that they're going to do instead of like maybe 20 players all around and they're just doing the exact same thing and, and all that. So I just that's just something you'll see how as we go, what we look at there. Um, individual chat, unit chats, so that's some, something you'll do as well. Just take, you know, a player away or, or two players away or whatever unit it might be and have a little chat um, just, just to make sure they know um, and they're 100% on everything. That's kind of the warm-up we look at. So like basically RA, MP, so ramp, um, raise heart rate, activate the muscles, mobilize, mobilize the joints and potentiate to, to be ready for the game, basically. Okay, so that one is, is really like getting into your football. Um, the rest of them are a little bit more, um, you know, your flexibility and, and raising heart rate and so on. That's one thing, um, you know, I, I, I kind of think is really, really important. You see teams coming out for the warm up and are coming out in dribs and drabs and, you know, one is running out, the other one's like, you know, and then you have someone that comes out three minutes after the warm up started does not happen everyone goes same time and you come out with a purpose as well right um i've seen teams this year we played against i remember albania and like before the game you know look at albania obviously wouldn't be a, a super player by no means or anything like that but like the game was won to be honest with you before the ball was even kicked they come out like and dribs and drabs like it was just so you know poor like and then the subs didn't even warm up they just sat in the dugout and i was like oh is this is this for real like you know um or girls onto the pitch, really ready to go from the warm up. Um, before kickoff, players fast feet, fast feet self self regulated. So just that's what, what I'm saying. You bring 20 minutes before the game, you get ready, you go back out, you've national anthems, all that stuff. But then um, starting 11, captain brings them in, fast feet, few little dynamic um, movements and so on um, before the game starts. But that's self regulated. Again, most I, I would honestly say at this stage in your league, they could do nearly the whole warm up. Like you know, that's that's where 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 they should be getting to like that. They don't need to have a coach there the whole time, but um, that's what they do just before kickoff. Okay, so players go onto the pitch. First part of it, everyone just goes out. Um, uh, I'm sure Dave and 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 Pat and, and and Scott would maybe talk a little bit about goalkeeping and things like that, maybe for arms as well. But um, Dave would would take out keepers whenever he wants. It could be five minutes before or whatever. He would look after that and he would do. He'd have the keepers all the way along, but he'd have the strikers and forwards. Um, sorry, the strikers and wingers come in as well, and I'll explain that in a minute. But passing in twos positions, two minutes. That's what it is, right? So just get out. They're in twos. Um, that's the 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 starting ten outfield players, but subs are just mingle in as well. Um. But they're in around the area they play and they're doing stuff that they would do two minutes so passing twos feel for the pitch positions right back right wide right two center back so on match movements so you know opening out all that kind of stuff that they look to do maybe it might be a little overlap and underlap so on substitutes they go in positions as well so it's not a defender going off with a center forward and the subs they, they'll do the same thing and it's really the art to raise the heart rate so um, after that two minutes they got out they got a feel for again simple things as well feel for the pitch feel for you know what the, the conditions of the pitch the weather all that kind of stuff um, happens in that two minutes and it's self-regulated again they just do it themselves and you know you might have just a little mingle around and whatever um, activation then so Charlotte the physio would look after activation um, again just that's, that's what you're looking at so 18 players three lines um, and she'd look after that. Actually, she wasn't available, so Pearl done it on the right here. You'll see Pearl doing a warm up um, for, for that game. But it's a structured warm up. 18 players, three lines of six. Um, activate the muscles, bands used for that. Um, and then mobilize the joints, dynamic work. Okay, so and it's, it's slow to fast. 10 minutes, job done, ready to go. And then they're, 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 they're over to, to Pearl, Irene, and, and Dave. Okay. Um, so again, eight minutes this part. So defenders now will go separate. Midfielders will go separate. Wingers and, and center forwards will go separate. So Pearl will look after this part then with the defenders. And that's kind of set up. And I, I kind of put them all in kind of the area pitches um, that, that they use as well. So as you can see there, it's the back four and the three then, um, subs or whatever, um, they're against them. And Pearl there is kind of like a midfield six per se. So area, you know, again, it's up to yourself, whatever you think, but usually it's 20 by 15. Defenders, back four and substitutes opposition, match movements. Okay, so everything they're doing here, as you can see in that one, um, it's 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 basically building out from the back and so on. So she played into the left back, drop out, and, and, and Pearl will be moving, trying to get into position to receive it. Nothing hectic here at all. It's really just just getting through the ideas. Again, always very very mindful of that. Like that, it's just a warm up. We just need to to get to a certain level. We don't want players um, exhausted from the warm up. So in the in this warm up, there be a bit of attacking and defending. So attacking, build up, defending, 
big one for me, you know, we always talk about pressure, cover, balance and so on um, in defending. But the first thing would be intercept um, for me. So so that would be the first principle I have on defending. So if you can intercept, happy days. Um, so you don't have to get into a 1v1 or a 2v2, whatever it is. So can we intercept, happy days. If not, then pressure, cover, balance. Um, uh, transition to, act, to, to attack and transition to defend will be naturally in it as well. Um, but Pearl will have the ball in hand for this. Um, so, for example, that she could knock a ball in there, maybe to the left back, but then she could drop a ball um, and say, right, game's on here now, and they just forget about the other ball and they have to, to, to go to that one. So it could be giving it to the Blues or whatever, and then it's a little transition to defend for the for the Greens. Okay, so that's just something that we look at as well. Ball on the ground and in the air. So, um, like the example there is on the ground, but she'd also come in and, and have the ball in the air, and it could be, you know, the up between the Blue and one of the centre backs, the rest of them then tuck in. Um, you know, depending on, on a flake on or whatever it might be. So everything again back to the game. Um, Pearls acts as a midfield six then for a lot of build-up and so on. Irene then, just her part with the midfielders is kind of just two parts. Again, it's eight minutes, but it's it's just part one. It's just nice and simple. It's just a little bit of a um, combination play. Pass, follow your pass or whatever it might be. Uh, small enough area, midfielders. So unopposed combination play, one and two touches. Um, again, potentiate. So we're getting into the game. Um, the second part then is it's like a little rondo or the 4v1 or whatever it might be. Um, so 12 by 12 can be smith smaller as well. So again, that might be something you might think about. And, and Irene, I've seen Irene move cones and that. Um, so midfielders again, as I said, so part two could be a 4v1, it could be a 4v2. So depending on numbers and the many, you know, I, I know in this game we just had five midfielders. Um, it could be a 3v2 maybe, so she might change that up as well. It could be a 4v2 where, where Irene just might act, act as one of the outside players. Um, again, same same idea, and it's one and two touch. Um, is what you're looking at. So just getting getting them getting them into that. So one touch, if it's one touch, you can play with any foot. If it's two touch, take it on the back foot, so up and out. So one touch to open, and then second touch to player, whatever it might be. And there's obviously it can be a transition element as well. So if that blue player wins it, pass it to Irene or dribble outside the area, whatever it might be. Or the person that played the played the pass then becomes the person in the middle. So straight away, the person receives it, the blue. Just passes to one of the greens and then they're outside and the other person comes in. So Dave then would look after goalkeepers and forwards. Um, so that's just giving a little idea to set up. So nice and simple. Two here, two there, two there. Three little stations. Player here comes out and takes a shot on the keeper. Then it's just a little one two with the middle player here and that player goes on and takes a shot on the keeper. And then the first player then goes over and it's like a little one two with the third over here and then it's a cross scene and both one and two then make runs for the for the finish. Okay, and then that's done. They come out, keepers change, um, and so on. Again, rotating of positions as well. So so um different players will play in different areas. So like very much with wingers, they need to be able to play on both sides. Like so we, we you know over the years you 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 probably have probably right footers playing left wing at times and all that, but same thing, it could be a left footer footer playing on the on the right wing. So all things like so you need to be able to cross, shoot, all that stuff is, is really, really important. Um, good workout for the keepers as well um, on this one. So three stations, three cones, wingers, centre forwards and goalkeepers. Um, so I, I went kind of through all that. Goalkeepers are rotate and then just variations again. So they will have a few variations in that. And again, it's the same thing, getting them ready for the for the, the football side of things. Last little part then will just be a little possession. So 4v2 plus 2, 8 minutes. So Pearl and Irene will be involved in this. Um, yellow players, just, just players at the end players or whatever it might be. Um, and then it's just 4v4 in the middle, but you'll see it's a little bit position specific as well. So it's 2-1-1. Um, again, the two could be full backs and um, they could be wingers. The yellows usually are the centre backs. Um, and then, you know, but you're, you're always thinking again of, of, of position specific in, in this. So 20 by uh, 12 metres, 4v4 with end players. Transition when the, when, pl when the ball is played to that yellow player. So the greens, as they are, they are playing up. When that ball goes to the yellow player, then that yellow player plays with the blues and it tries to get to the other end. So there's transition always in it. Position specific, again, same thing, getting ready for the competition. Substitutes, just do rondo. So like, there's no point in the subs like going in, again, getting their, their, their heart rate up, all that kind of stuff. And then they just, they're going to sit on the bench. So just go do a little rondo and then, uh, you know, they, they're, they, they'll do their little warm ups as uh, in trees uh, during the, the game. Um, so that's, that's important. Just for myself, I would always look at the opposition. So kind of a funny photo here. I remember I was in the RSC that night and uh, 
I was I was there and this lad was on the on the ground taking a photo like and I was like what are you doing like it's in February like you're gonna get freezing he said oh no just just act normal just act normal and this is what happened but that, that's what I'm doing I'm looking at their goalkeepers um, I'm looking at player height for set pieces so again we would have videos we had videos of of their three games but again just little things that you're looking at positions that maybe they might do something similar again that we do position specific so you're maybe just getting a little, little bit of a head on that playmakers so who does really well for them who looks good ideas you're, you're picking up ideas so like you know constantly there might be something that they'll do that you go geez that's a really really good idea um communication decision execution that's something that we would always look for in players so what's their players like with the communication decision making execution um you know so again it could be a playmaker but it could be someone that you might say you know they look like they're technically not great or whatever it might be okay so so that's what you'll do on that again for the game that's what we look at Okay, so breaking it down into the four functions, but being a little bit more specific again on the attacking, build up in our own half into the midfield, and then scoring in the opposition half. Um, on the defending, when we're defending their build up, we'll disturb the build up, and then obviously prevent scoring, and then the transition. So that's how we'll break down the game, every game, every review, everything. And the players are really, really like tuned into this as well, and obviously you do an awful lot of work with them on this as well. Set pieces again, um, for and against, um, obviously come into that as well. Okay. And that's, you know, constantly going. It's, it is it's difficult. I, I, I have to say myself, it's definitely one of the areas I think I really, like, need to keep improving on. Even this game, I think it was it was a few minutes in before we actually got to grips with how they were, were shaped up and, and so on and who their top players were and all that. Like, so it's, it's, it's something that you constantly work on. Um, but what I think is, is important. Now, I'll just show you a little thing that we do. And I'm sure some of you do it as well um, in terms of match roles. So... It's not, and you know, I've all, I've been there for years, and uh, where it's like, you know, you could have a staff, you could have two people, three people, four people, whatever it might be, and everyone's just watching the game, and everyone's just emotionally involved in the game, and so on. But what we have here is, I will look after the game in terms of communication to players, overall game, be it standing up in the in the technical area, giving them instructions if needs be, you know, and and, uh, and so on, or just sitting down or whatever. But I'm just taking in the overall game. Uh, Pearl is looking at Ireland defending with transition to attack. Again, looking at the qualities, and you see even the warm-up, like Pearl, really, really good defender. She's with the defenders. Irene, international centre-forward. She's with the, the, the centre-forwards um, and, and wingers. Like, um, you know, so it's their little ideas that we look at as well. Um, so that'll be Irene's task. Dave then, look at the opposition. So formation, strengths, weaknesses, key players, um, really, really important role. So after about maybe five minutes, ten minutes in the game, you know, you're, you're turning around, right, Dave? You know what what's what's what who's their you know top players all that kind of stuff so that would be dave's job dave also just has set pieces as well so if players coming on or whatever but also in the game as well looking at set pieces how we're shaping up in terms of defending and attacking and and, and vice versa with the, with the opposition um chelsea sometimes we have our light tagging and um, so, so that's that's a helps alana so alana will obviously be up um video on the game um and and then uh and chelsea might be live, live tagging for as well another one as well and i was bringing this in for the for the elites was a stand view so having someone in the stand that's you know someone that you trust and has really really good opinion and all that like that that can feed back um really really important um and you know in fairness you see that you see that with the seniors um i've seen extra reduce under 17s this year as well really utilizing that as well like so um really really good that as well like if you can have that very very proud moment okay so so that's obviously the national anthem really really proud for 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 the girls and and obviously everyone involved like you know so um you know and, and again uh you know something that everyone that there and people involved with them and so on and so forth should be very very proud of as well okay this is just a, a little one as well and the reason i turned this in was was um you know before a game you usually get like the starting 11 and it's a pitch or whatever but just tonight, I said, uh, you, you guys there, I said, can we just put everyone in, like, you know, and back again to the same thing, like, it's subs and starting 11, it's none of that, everyone's in together, like, and you see a lot of smiling faces there, so there's not someone going, oh, I'm not starting, like, and my man's in the crowd, or whatever it might be, no, just, like, you'll come in, you could be the game changer, Um, I think that's very, very important for a, su a successful team. So, coaching in the game, then, so just, look, a few little pointers that I have here, again, these are very, very obvious, but sometimes the most obvious is not what you see sometimes, Um. Like I've been there, venting, commentating, becoming over and emotional. It's the same as being a player. You make a mistake, or the, the referee does something that you don't agree with. You're gone for the next five minutes if if you if you let yourself not be in emotional uh, control. So, really, really important on that. 
um, and that goes with all the staff, everything. Like, and you know, we've had like we were in Greece this year where we had a stonewall penalty in the first half. We got kicked up and down the pitch. Um, we had an absolutely legitimate goal um, from actually another corner, and that was 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 given as a free out. But you just need to just keep going because again, if you if you're like that, then it's going to feed into the pitch. I think body language is massive. It's absolutely key. So again, how you are reacting on the line. If someone makes a mistake, and in this game we had scenarios where we had a player score two unbelievable goals, and we had a player we had with a couple of mistakes. Like so, your body language is key. And um, players will feed off their coach, as I said. Coach your natural stoppages. So like you know, it might be a, um, someone's down injured. It might be you know a little break and play or whatever. That might be where you get a little bit of information on players playing off the other side of the pitch. Like very very hard to get anything in there. You know, um, plain and simple. Uh, so get the balance right to guide them rather than telling them and don't follow the ball bigger picture something I would have done an awful lot as well um, but that's where it's good to have people that are specific in their role um, because you, you know if you're, you're you're maybe the head coach or you're looking and you're taking in the game but if someone else is saying we're, 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 we're dropping too deep or the keepers you know wherever you know there are little things that sometimes you might not see so that's really really good to have more eyes and um, Keep subs active, so nice and simple. They, they, they're constantly going warming up, but we're allowed to um, have three out at a time. Um, so they, 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 you know, they don't even need to be told three come in, three go out, three come in, three go out, and so on. Um, and they don't need to be to be kept an eye and see if they're doing things. They know what to do. Um, but that's that's good. So work with staff as well. So that's you know, as I said, after a few minutes, come back, have a little chat, what you think. All that stuff really, really important. Um, if you forget, take notes. So, like, what I tend to do on that one is is is, is chat to Irene or Pearl, and and they will have a little notepad or whatever, and it just might be just remember that or whatever it might be, and um, and it could like even simple things as well, like you know when we go back, then we're we're reviewing this game straight away, like so. If you've got time on something, it makes things an awful lot easier as well, like so. That's something um, that they would do. Um, sit, relax. If you're talking too much, then you haven't done enough in training, like so. That's just something. Um, you know, you, you can't really do all that much on the sideline per se. Like, you know, your work really takes place in the training ground and so on. So half time then. So here, a couple little videos. Um, first two, one is a film. <laughs> and then the second one is just a charity game. But in fairness, they're things that you do see. Okay. Um, and I have been there. And the first one actually reminds me of playing an under 12 county final in hurling um, a long time ago. And uh, coming in at half time, Owen Kelly would be a temporary hurler, scored 4 11 in the first half. And the manager went to town on us and he had a hurl in his hand and he went to knock it off the, the, the bench, but he actually hit one of the players' legs, like just totally by accident. But like, I'm just, it's just unbelievable, like, you know. And, uh, you know, it just brings me back this little clip. So, have you ever been in a dressing room like this? Half time in La Bombonera Stadium and England trail Mexico by two goals to nil. Have you ever the crowd? He's shouting, Okay, so like you know, look, I, I think look that would have been maybe definitely was was the way you know was the way uh, you know a number of years ago as such, and it still does happen. Um, but I just think I don't think you get anything out with that plain and simple. Like, um, the next one, have a look at this one again. Just 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 see see the manager really look honing the manager and honing on the players as well, and, and what you see. Okay. So, uh, with the score nil nil, let's go to the England change room to listen to Big Sam's team talk. Rouse us, Big Sam. With uh, Johnny Wilkes and Tiz, okay? That's the changes for this half, all right? We've got a great first half. Make sure you keep the ball doing the work. We're still looking to get it in the wide areas. Yeah, for Danny and Ollie, particularly, all right? If it's not into feet, then have a little running behind as well, because we're a bit slow, both their fullbacks. Okay, then it's not getting to Kevin Phillips's feet. And look for him in the box as well, because he's a deadly finisher. All right? We haven't got Van der Sar to come, come within goal now. They've got Patrick Kelty, so it should be a little easier, hopefully, when you get the shots on target, yeah? Well done, lads. Let's keep it going then. Plenty fluid. Got the changes. You all right? 
You're off, Paddy. All right, lad. Well done. Well done. So man's going to go to left back. John's going to go to right back, and Jack Jack Whitehall's coming on midfield three. Was anyone listening to anything he just said? <laughs> <laughs> he goes in walking around. It's literally, it's just, it's Henry V. It just it goes in. It goes <laughs> in. All right. <laughs> Just, just, just an interesting one here. Like you know, I mean, like look, Pig Sam, in fairness, has has had an unbelievable career and, and and so on. But just things that you will see. Obviously, it's just a charity game, whatever. But like you see that an awful lot of dressing rooms, players and just not listening, moving around, doing their thing, all that stuff, hands in the pockets, you know, all that stuff that you'll see in that video. Um, you know, just just little things again, just to bear in mind when you are and. Even the structure of his, his talk as well, like it was just all over the place. It was it was talking one bit, you're off, Paddy, blah blah, all that kind of stuff. So that's something that you see, and it's something to work on as well, um, I think. So just half time then. Excuse me. So let them chill, let yourself chill. So comes to half time, they go into the dress room, they need to have a little chill time, have a little rest time, get their little fluids, or whatever needs to be. Um, I think that's really, really important. Who will go in with them will be the the um, with Chelsea and the medical staff and um, so that's uh, important as well I think as well you know particularly like depending on the game like if, if the game's not going well and you kind of say oh you know we're going off and we're having a little chat or whatever and like, what could happen in the dressing room you never know like you know it could be a fight or whatever so um, always they go in really really important a number of times this year Chelsea's come in to me to tell me things like so someone might be injured someone might be this might be that like so that gives us something to think about um, when we're having our chat okay so speak to coaches get their view five minutes Right. Again, you're playing National League, you should have 15 minutes. So, you know, and I would always say that to, to referee, no matter what level you're playing, how long do we have? Like, so you can kind of have a little bit of a structure. So five minutes, we have a chat, we have a cup of tea or whatever it might be. Um, and you're having a chat. Speak to the coaches. Again, roles, Pearl, defending, how we go on, uh, Irene attacking, obviously transitions, Dave and so on. So everyone is, is just feeding in, gives you a little bit of time just to, to focus and so on. So key points to get across. Three is enough. If you start going over three, and uh, I think that's you know just just becomes ridiculous. The other thing as well is, you know, sometimes people think they need to keep talking until they're told to get out of the dressing room. That's not the case either. A number of times this year we just stop talking. That's it. And just say right, just get ready, get ready to go. And it could be nearly five minutes before we have to go out. And um, that's no problem. Just get your points across. That's that's enough. And um, units together again in the in the dressing room. Um, the layout of the dressing room is similar to the to the unit meeting and the, uh, sorry not the unit meeting but the, the pre-match meeting they're all in their area so goalkeepers will be together defenders will be side and midfielders forwards so there so now when you're in there and you're chatting you're not looking where is such and such and you're looking over there and she's beside the keeper and she's center forward or whatever it's, it's structured as you can go so i think that's important as well when you're in the dressing room subs need to be in the dressing room big on that um like too often you see subs outside knocking around not even doing anything really um and like they're you're inside and you're going through how you're going to you know perform in the second half like who's a key part of the second half is the subs really really important so they're game changers they're going to come on they could change the game for you plain and simple so they need to be in there you're talking about things and you'll see in a minute what we talked about at halftime in this game um and you know it's really important that they're there no multitasking atten attention body language that's kind of back again to to uh, what you've seen with Sam Allardyce there. He's just like all over the place himself, like, and then players are just doing whatever they want, people walking around, no one's listening to him. So no multitasking. When it's time, that five minutes is do whatever you need. It might be medical, it might be something to eat, drink, all that stuff. But when you're talking in attention, but your body language really dictates that as well. Um, and you can see a little, little um, example in a minute as well. Don't talk about all that is wrong in the first half. Like, you know, really, really, you know, something that I, I've seen, I've done myself as well. You're talking, this, you know, and then, like you're about to go back onto the pitch and you haven't talked about anything of the second half. So I think that's really, really important as well. Um, positive, inspire, use of visual aids. So obviously a tactics board talk, talked about that, um, uh, having a flip chart board or whatever, everyone can see it, I think is important. Human tactics board. So that's that's something I think um, is really, really important and really engaging as well, where I'll just get the players to stand up in their position and, and talk through a few things. Um, you know, I think that's really, really engaging as well. Like something I do an awful lot in training, maybe not so much at half time, but but definitely you just have them in their formation, the back four or whatever, and you might walk through things. And obviously you can bring in maybe subs or whatever to act as opposition or whatever it might be, but just a human tactics board. Um, you know, you, you're using your board or there might be something there or cones as well, depending on, on what you have available. But um, visual aids are really, really good as well. Uh, so individual unit chats and then let's let's go. Okay, so that's that's a big one. 
I think this is really, really important. Like you have to think as well, you're in there, you're going right this, 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 this. But on the other like side of the hall, their managers are going this, 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 and they're working on what they're going to do in the second half. So always plan for the fact that no plan ever goes according to plan. Um, just seen that there a few weeks ago. I was really, really good saying. So you need to have a plan B as well. Like, so just think about it. Like, if you, if they have something and 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 you're like maybe really taking advantage of that, they're probably going to stop that in the second half. So you might have to vary up things as well, um, or at least have the players that they know what to do. Um, again, a lot of things and a lot of times, and early on, first questions you'll ask is 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 ask the players about things. Um, you get a lot of good stuff back off them as well. Um, so it's not just you talking and saying this, 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 and, and so on. You can ask them as well. So this is just that first half against Iceland. A few things. Number one, our centre forward, um, the Iceland's left side centre back was right footed, and her press allowed her to open out and play at the other centre back too often. And the intensity of her press wasn't great either. Okay, so that had to be addressed. Um, but this goes back to again how we were going to shape up in the second half because we changed it in the second half and we pressed with two. So really, if I went in and I talked about that and so on and gave like, you know, and 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 really went on to her about this, like it's nothing got to do with what's going to happen in the second half. Yes, if it goes to that side in the second half and she's got someone up beside her, yes, keep it that side. But that's kind of nearly obvious enough. Um, but like the big thing um, is, is that she like has an understanding and maybe it's something that you'll highlight in your review of the game and something I'll talk in, in a few minutes about as well. Okay, so that was one. The second one was the wide left. So Kerry Brown was was too deep, um, you know, and and there was a few times where actually that pass was played from the center, left side centre back to the right side centre back where I think she could have nicked in, but she was too deep. All right. And the third thing then involved our midfield. So um, it was Ella Malai, um, Maren Devaney and, and Avian Clancy were in midfield. And Avian there is the deepest midfielder and she was staying central the whole time. But obviously Iceland played with a one and a two advanced, right? And we, we in attack, would play with one and two advanced, but we need to switch it a lot quicker. Um, and they didn't get a grip to that. But the big thing as well, the per person that was directly kind of um, the opposition of, of Maren Devaney was like, for me, one of the best players I've seen at this age group without shouting out. She was absolutely excellent. Like, and she was pulling Maren all over the place. Then Avian was trying to say essentially, but her player was getting on the ball out out here. So this player was causing us problems now as well. But Ellen as well was was playing nearly out around here rather than getting central and keeping an eye on this player when we didn't have the ball. Um, so that's something really, really important. The, the, the next thing is if you have a look, all of a sudden, look at the differences. We're about 10 yards further up. So now we're just giving too much space altogether. So second half, that's how we went, went to play. But... It happened a little bit in this game, and this is it goes back again where you're reviewing and you're thinking about, Jesus, did I really get that across? Did they understand? You see where I have the two ones? That's how we shaped up in midfield now. We asked one of them, one of the ones to push on to their midfield six, and then Avine would, would, would be between the two, or she would get one of the centre halves to step in if needs be. Um, so it would nearly be, be player for player. Um, but they didn't really... 100% grasp that and again it comes back to did we communicate right you always have to look at yourself um, and at times that six in here was able to get the ball in between here but then we have to watch here as well and saying do these need to be right in line here can they not come in a little bit and these players have something to play in that as well in terms of how we, we compact we were um, but it's just something again to, to work on um, but you see big difference when you're you've gone 10 yards further up okay um, but that's just giving you an idea of what we talked about really really good example here um, an unbelievable access. And you watched um, Tom O'Connor's webinar on Saturday would have seen this clip as well. But it's a Dan at halftime, Juventus versus Real Madrid, uh, Real Madrid head coach. And it's kind of a lot of stuff that you take from here that, like, you know, that I would have talked about as well in terms of um, giving them time. Okay, so it's 1 1 half time. Obviously, they'd be favourites. I'm just going to let this play now. It's, it's, it's going to be three years. Okay, what's up? Hay que estar preparado, joder, vamos. Y 
Desde los hace un año, cuando queríamos salir, salieron. Sabemos que es, es, es un partido difícil también para, para ellos, ¿vale? Lo más importante para nosotros, defensivamente, tenemos que estar más agresivos. Pero más agresivos en buen sentido de la palabra, no para, no para que salga la tarjeta. Lo importante es nosotros llegar a tiempo. Entonces, estar un poquito más cerca todos, uno, uno de otro, más cerca y más agresivo. Tenemos que estar un poco más agresivos, ¿vale? Cuando no tenemos el balón. Luego, ellos juegan con 4-4-2 con Alves muy alto y Manduchis muy alto. Lo que tenemos que hacer nosotros es que ellos reculan también. Entonces nosotros un poquito más, Isco, cuando defendemos a la izquierda, jugando 4-4-2, y luego con el balón, jugando un poquito más en femenino. Pero pensando que también que nosotros cuando tenemos el balón, hemos dicho paciencia, jugamos más, más rápido por fuera, más rápido por fuera y más cero Dani, más arriba. Lo que, un, poqu un poquito más. Tenemos que, cuando nosotros tenemos el valor, tenemos que tener ellos que defienden ahí con Dani y con Marcelo, ¿vale? Y luego de segunda línea con Lucas, de vez en cuando, un poco más, y con Isco, cuando jugamos de un lado a otro, luego hay que romper, hay que, hay que hacer que en cara o, o carima la espalda o el contrario, lo que trabajamos un poco la semana. Porque tocamos, tocamos, como y luego el, el gol es esto, jugamos por fuera, centro, y al paso y, y marcamos. La única cosa, nosotros tenemos que meter un poquito más amplitud ¿vale? y ritmo. Pero no jugar, no jugar mucho en dentro. Lo que tenemos que hacer de un lado a otro. De un lado a otro. ¿De acuerdo? Y luego, defensivamente, vuelos. Meter un poco más de, 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 de pierna y ya está. Nada más. Y, y seguir trabajando. ¿eh? Porque tenemos que sufrir. Es una final. Sufrimos, pero siempre con la serenidad. Nosotros pensar que... Va a llegar otra vez el gol, ¿de acuerdo? Vamos. Sí. Vamos. Vamos, gente, vamos, vamos. Ok, so like, you know, I just, my, my, my feelings on that, when I seen it first and I seen, you know, someone said to me, oh, there's a clip like of, of, of the, the half time. I was expecting, you know, touch screens, you know, half time analysis, tactics, board, all that kind of stuff. Like, like to be honest with you, like that could be an under 12. Um, cup final. That's what it could be like. You know, I mean, things he spoke about. He just said two things. Even at the start, like, he, like you know, you look at him, you probably think he's a little bit nervous. Even like, is it, you know, but then he, he just started getting into it. He started like, you know, to chat, but no roaring, no shouting. Really, really inspiring. Just two things. Like, be aggressive. You know, on the press, all that kind of stuff, and then switch your play. Again, refers back to training during the week. What we look to do in training and so on and so forth. Like, so, like you know, really, really top class that way. Um, and you know the right to go and obviously they won the game 3-1 I'm not saying just because of that but it, it, it sometimes you know we think about oh the higher level and things like that you know simple is is, is, is just really really good there so I just think it's a really really good clip um, so this one uh, you might have seen this as well and what I'm talking about here you know it goes, it goes a little bit mad or whatever but just look at the energy as well like but look at like you know people are just so focused in on him like and it's the body language again and so on and it's um, how he transmits his message um, it's just, it's here always to find me, Vini, Nico, Vini, Dino, Gundo. You pass the ball to find that. You pass the ball because they jump. And when they jump, the space is scared. They don't jump, it's a long. So go, commit, commit, commit. They don't commit, why do you have to commit? Because they jump. He strikes the ball. When the ball is here, like, when we are in that position, we pass, pass. What is the space? He's scaring. When the ball is here, chaka, he's the big. Okay. And it's, it's, it's interesting, it's, you know, back to that thing I was talking about as well, about that, that hold, link, and then stretch, like, that's what he's talking about, that stretch player, like, so, you know, find that player and, and they can they can kill teams, like, you know, um, but again, it's just his energy and all that, it's, it's just fascinating to see. So then, 
Game's finished, cool down, nice simple things. We'll have a little group huddle, we'll have a little chat. Um, nice and simple, it might be like 30 seconds basically, but everyone in together, staff, players, little chat. Um, players cool down 10 minutes with Charlotte, so they'll go through uh, a little cool down with Charlotte. Um, players that didn't play, box to box runs, 75% um, effort, 50, or, sorry, 500 meters. So again, that's just something that we look to do with players that didn't play, obviously they need to, to get a get a workout as well again it, it's something that's evolving as well like that could be a little possession game maybe as well or whatever it might be depending on the size of areas so there are little things that you think about but i think it's important that they do get something if they didn't play and um, players free then to speak to obviously parents um no no post-mortem absolutely not right and you'll see as well what i'll talk about here like when the game is finished we like there's no review on that day the only thing we'll do is show the goals um that's all or like you know it might be something in the game you know it could even be something funny whatever right that's it um even if the game kicked off at 12 o'clock that even at seven o'clock again because you need that downtime people's heads will be wrecked otherwise um and that includes us as well as staff like so after the game no major post-mortem um like i've been this year we've had scenarios where we've won games we've um drawn games and we've lost games and lost games well in belgium like so um, you know, but it's been the exact same thing and, and uh, it's win, lose or draw. I think that's really, really important as well. So like always it's a role model, right? And and we can't ask the players what we don't do ourselves like. So um, this clip here for me, like look again, a massive mentor for me, but what a what a, what an interview. It's 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 uh, Ireland's under 17s against Holland a few years ago when the goalkeeper got sent off. Um, you know, it was mad. It was like, you know, all over the world, like um, all that happened. But here, Tony O'Donoghue is, is interviewing Conor O'Brien. Um, again, win, lose, or draw. Um, sorry, this one first. That's Pop just saying something as well. I think it's really, really good. So how we react when it doesn't go away. But just on to Colin's clip, right? Um, just moments really, after that drama, I can't understand why the uh, goalkeeper was sent off. Was Were you given any explanation? Uh, I think he said something that he might have came off his line earlier. Um, and he warned the Dutch keeper in two of the penalties, we were told as well. Um, but look, you know, these boys have done the country pro tonight. Absolutely, they have. But to, to come back twice as you did in a way, first of all, the, to, to concede the, the goal from the corner and then to come back into the game so quickly. And then after missing the first penalty, to come back into it. Oh, look, they have great character. They've been like that all year. Uh, they're a super bunch of lads. Um, we probably are quality on the ball tonight. Might have been a little bit better at times. But we limited this talented Dutch team to uh, goal scoring opportunities. Got a great goal, you know, bouncing back on one down. Uh, went to penalties and very unfortunate about what happened here tonight. I'm surprised you're keeping your cool in a way because obviously you put your heart and soul into this the same as the players have done. And to see poor Jimmy Corcoran, he was in bits afterwards. Look, they'll be devastated now, um, but you know, they've been fantastic all year. Uh, they've big careers ahead of them. Um, they've had a great uh, season with us, going through two qualifying rounds, uh, unbeaten top of their group. And as I said, they've run a real talented Dutch uh, team right right to the limit tonight. Um, but a, a tough way to go out. Um, but look, we take a lot out of it, and they've all big careers ahead of them in the game. It was the first goal that the Dutch have conceded in, in this tournament so far. Yeah, um, they, they, they've had a remarkable record themselves, um, you know, so th their temperament was tested as well. But as I said, I thought we limited them. We had a really good defensive shape, good discipline about us, uh, real good quality for goal. Probably need a little bit more quality at times during the game, on the ball. Um, but look, they've been super. What a tournament, what an experience for them. And I said, they, 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 the country really proud tonight. Thank you. So like, for me, that's just unbelievable, considering, you know, what has just gone before and so on. Um, just how we spoke and obviously you know Tony was was trying to get him to say you know you know it was an absolute joke you know but like he just held his cool kept going back to the players again kept going back to the players how good they done how how you know done their done their you know nation proud and all that kind of stuff really really good okay your next clip is is from a player it's probably one of my favorite clips of all time but uh from a player end of a world cup game um é querer mais é treinar mais é se cuidar mais é estar pronta para jogar 90 e mais 30 minutos. Quantos minutos são? É isso que eu peço para as meninas. Não vai ter uma formiga para sempre. Não vai ter uma Marta para sempre. Não vai ter uma Cristiane. E o futebol feminino depende de vocês para sobreviver. Então pense nisso. Valorize mais. Chore no começo para sorrir no fim. Okay, so again, just just unbelievable passion, like you know, and I I just think that's a really really good one for. 
you know, if, if you had a parent player presentation, wherever it might be, I'd definitely be playing that, like, because just, you know, value it more, like, right in the beginning, so you can smile in the end, like, so you have a player maybe that doesn't get selected for squads or whatever it might be, all that stuff, there's so many things in that, like, that I think are absolutely top class. And a big thing as well is, you know, I'm showing a few clips there, and I'm always kind of like, you know, I'd love to show clips of, of like, uh, you know, in the female game or whatever it might be, but that's where we need as well need to, to as much as possible, you know, can we can we drive on the standard that like nearly everything here is is all on female game? It's not videos of Guardiola or whatever it might be. That that's that's what you you want to get to. Um, so since post game, nice little picture there. That's in the RSC. So clean up after ourselves. That's the youngest member of the squad. Um, but like all the players are in that as well. You see the clipboard there as well. That we talked about. That's what we would really use for for the tax board as well. So it's in a position where everyone can see it. Um, you know, so so really really important in that as well. So. Sweep the sheds, another little mantra. Um, you know, it's it's a, an all black kind of thing. We'll say the all black rugby team, but you know, it's always something that wherever you go, you leave it as you got it, plain and simple. Um, so don't expect anyone else to do that. And that goes with everything coming off the the bus, <clears throat> um, you know, getting off a bus, long journey, whatever place is clean, um, your hotel when you leave it, uh, after you have your meals, you take up your 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 um your your plates, all that stuff. So really, really important. Again, we have to live it as well as coaches. Recovery, so they're straight away on recovery. They have shakes, they have the their their meals straight back, and 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 so on. As I talked about already, the rest really really important again and relax. So that's all really really important. So that, that kicks in straight away after the game. And so the last thing again back again that need to be in is, is listen to you doing a, you know, twenty minutes of the game and all that. That's you know, and even for yourself as well, you're only just wrecking your, your your head like so. Post game talk. It's just a little picture there. So just just. Just does for uh, during a training session, I think in Belgium. Um, but remember, like how you leave them is how you will find them. Plain and simple. So that is a really, really important one, and particularly for your, yourselves. Like we play a game on Sunday, and then it's back on a Tuesday, or whatever. Um, you know that that's really, really important. So that little thing that you say to them um, is is absolutely crucial. The last thing you might say, whatever it might be, like be it positive. So cycle of development. So this is how we would we, we would uh, have things. So you play your game. Our goes to game analysis. So after the game now and that night and early the next morning, everyone is going through clips like, and it's back to the same thing again with the the um, staff like. So I really be looking at the attack and transition defend. I'll just nearly watch the whole game and, and pick clips that I, I think are really important. Um, uh, you know, Dave set pieces, things like that, and um, goalkeeping. If there's anything that needs to show the goalkeepers, and then Pearl will be on the defending transition to attack. So um, that. That's how we do it. And obviously Lana then is, is, is pulling the whole show together. Then you're looking back to your coaching practice. So can you put that in place in your coaching practice and then you're back to your game again? Okay, so cycle of development is, is what we look to do. And that's where the magic happens really. Like, so, you know, I mean, we can talk an awful lot about, you know, half times, all that kind of stuff. But like the work really happens in the training field, plain and simple. Like, so if, if you're really going to affect things, it's, it's going to be there. Um, little bits and pieces you can do to make things better and all that. Yeah, by all means, but, but that's where the magic happens. So when we get back to the hotel, then obviously you have a meal and all that. Um, and we'd have, I think at that night, it was half 10 player staff meeting. So players first in, just go like nice and simple, well done, blah, blah, and just show the goals. Now, this is a really interesting game, right? In that, in, in that the two goals we score, you know, first one's a good goal. Maybe the keeper could have done better from Iceland. But the second goal is, is if Messi scored, it'd be all over social media, right? For us, really, really good goal. But on the flip side, Iceland's two goals, like, you know, really preventable for us, like, and, like, you know, a few players were kind of probably, you know, oh, could have done better and, and so on, all that kind of stuff. So you have two kind of things there. You have a player that's on a high and all that, and then you have other players and, like, one particular, like, goalkeeper really disappointed, like, hardest position. You make a mistake as a keeper, you know, it's a goal, like, you know, so so really, really difficult. So there, there are things, again, as, as, as a coach and trying to um, to make sure and, and reassure that player and all that. So just, just interesting with this game.
funny thing is actually if we with this goal, like really, really good goal by Ellen Dare, but if you see down here, that's obviously me, and that's Dave Rooney. And Dave Rooney's giving me a little punch in the arm because about two or three minutes before that, I said to the staff, I think we might have to take out Ellen. She's getting very tired. So <laughs> uh, just just an interesting one. But look, like you can see in that game, like like the two goals we gave away, really, really disappointing to give away them goals. Like, you know, and like, you know, we have to really, really learn from that. The first one, we probably could have cleared it um, two or three times. There was a few uh, header, then it was like, you know, kind of rash kind of clearance then there was two people diving in then the ball was pulled across and the player that probably blamed herself the most was was, was the centre back who, who knocked uh, like scored on goal as such but like nothing she could do like you know um, and obviously then the goalkeeper you know these mistakes do happen right um, but it's really really important how like if they look out and they see you on the sideline you have your head buried in your arms and you're going like oh you know whatever or turn back and you're, you're giving out or whatever it might be like how does that make them feel like so these are all really really important things I think Um I think this 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 the reason I put in this clip you might have seen it a few weeks ago I was doing rounds in um in in social media. Um so what the reason I put this in is it's just so so important with parents. I cannot say how much and why like I always have parents in every minute we can. We have to educate parents. How often as a parent or, or a child get into the car after the game, parent goes, Well, he should have played you there, he should have done this, he should have done that, um, she should have done this, whatever it might be. You, the referee was poor, the wind was wrong, blah blah, all that kind of stuff. Absolute rubbish, like, because you're only going to make an excuse maker. Um, you know, and, and for Robin Burn Percy, when this came out a few weeks ago, I was just like going, Oh, it's just heaven, like, for someone like him to come out and say this and how he spoke to his kid, absolutely top class. So if you haven't seen it, just, just really focus in on it. I actually had this chat last week, funny enough, seriously, with, with my son. So my son uh, plays at Feyenoord. He played against uh, um, Ajax under 14. He was on the bench. He didn't play. So uh, in the car on the way back, he was like a bit moody, disappointed, complaining a little bit about uh, others, about the coach, etc. And then I said, yeah, I said, but check you. I said, you sound like a loser. You know, if you talk like this in a way, you sound like you lost. I said, you are blaming him, you're blaming her, you're blaming this, you're blaming everything. I said, but I don't hear one single thing about yourself. I said, winners, I said, they take control and they blame themselves and they look where they can improve. Yeah. And um, um, this is what you should be thinking about. So I didn't tell him uh, what he should think about. You should ask yourself the question, are you a loser or are you a winner? I said, for me, it doesn't matter. I said, I said, because I'm your dad. I said, the only job I have and uh, your mom has is when you're 20, that you're a good boy, that you're ready for life. You know, you can make your mistakes. You can do what you want. I, I love you for the same amount. It doesn't matter for me if you make it as a football player or not. I said, but you say that this, that this is your passion. So uh, you should take control of your life and stop complaining because sounds like a loser i said then i don't mind if you want to be a loser be a loser i still love you as much <laughs> i said i said it doesn't matter for me i said but if you want to be a winner take control of your life and stop complaining about others and then i watched him train the next morning my, my, my wife said where are you going i said oh, well, i'm gonna watch this session uh two days later actually because they played on saturday and monday morning so i'm there sitting cold <laughs> hoodie on I'm looking and I see this tiger training, running, working. And I was like, ah, okay, okay. He realized he has to take control of his life. He's 13 now. All right, so look, look, absolutely brilliant. Really, really good. Really, you know, <clears throat> brilliant exhibition of what you should do really there as a parent. Um, so, you know, ask them what they can improve rather than kind of making excuses for them and all that so like again this video will will be on the powerpoint so you can just copy and paste and put them into any presentation or anything you want to send out to uh to parents but i think that's really really important the key though probably is you know we need to be getting this out to parents like when they're they're, they're nine they're ten and eleven um you know that's really really important uh so so just absolutely top class clip okay so just moving on then to your cpd tasks so it's obviously going to be on match day um, and it, like I think it'd be, it's it's a good one. I want I said to, to to all the people that are going to present, like try and make it that something that you put into practice. It's not something that you do, and it's like just just run there. So this is something that that if you put together that you could do for for a match. Okay, so your team is playing away from home. It's a two hour drive with a two p.m. kickoff. Um, please outline your plan for the players for the day. 
so for the day now as well so we we you know we need to get away from they arrive at the ground and then we play and, and so on and then they go and that's it like so for the day like sort of preparation you can see all the stuff that we talked about is really really important include full itinerary food rest warm-up staff roles half time post game de development cycle so you know what you look to do now maybe when you go back to, to training on tuesday or, or, or and so on so all that really really important again it's something you have probably have all have on your head in your head and all that but putting it down on paper and all that to give you you know really really good um it has to be completed by next monday 5 p.m so it just needs to be uh completed in powerpoint or word up to yourself um and has to be emailed to myself Okay, so and I'll give you feedback on it, um, on 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 once reviewed and of the standard, and that's like you know plain and simple needs to be of a certain standard. So, really, really put a little bit of thought into it if you want to do it. Now, this does not, um, if you don't do it, it's, there's not, it's up to yourself, right? Obviously, the the big thing is you get three hours free CPD, um, which is nice to start collecting. So, so you know if you're moving up licenses or whatever, so. Um, it's up to yourself, but I just think, and I said, as much as possible, make it practical. Like, and this is a good thing to have in place for you, um, you know, for your for your teams and and so on. And like, hopefully, maybe you take a few things out of this presentation that you could implement. Um, or even I'll get them back, and I might get a few things as well. As I said, we're we're, we're constantly learning off each other. Um, so next week then we're looking at women's under 17s. Um, it'll be myself, and it'll just be looking at the high performance culture. Like, so really massive on that. The word culture at times, you know, it gets thrown around off, but, but what we do, what, what we're about, the kind of why you will say, um, so so or what's our purpose? The player ID, so what are we looking in players, um, you know, how do we how do we you know do our identification of players, all that stuff really, really important. Player position descriptions, so goalkeeper, what do we expect on the ball, off the ball, and so on. Um, and I'll also add in clips as well. Um, and this presentation would be a good one as well that like you could maybe send out to your actual players um, after to say like this is what they're looking at in terms of uh, a player at under 17 level. Okay, so so look, that's that's it for tonight. I hope you've um, you've picked up a few things. Um, it's it's nearly an hour and a half. I knew it probably would go on this long, but look, uh, it flew by for me anyway. I really really enjoyed.